Hi guys, it's Rana the Math Person. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to be bombarded with all these new videos, make sure you turn off that notification. Other than that, let's just dive right into this question. Now I'll be going over question 76 on SO exam P. So pause the video real quick and try to spam yourself. Okay, as soon as you're tempted, let's just dive right in. So this is the claim amount that are, and there's actually three claims such that follows this distribution right here. And we're asked to find the expected value of the largest of the three claims. I'm actually going to denote y to be equal to the max of x1, x2, and x3, where x is, is the number of, x1 is the first claim, second claim, and third claim. And then, so basically we're asked to find the expected value of y. And then we know that for expectation, this is equal to y times the probability function of y, so this is what we're looking for. And we don't know what g of y is, but we do know what big g of y is. This is equal to. If it is a IID, as in um, in independently, identically independent distribution, then in, we know that we know that it follows a st order statistics formula. So max for max is little star here. It's going to be equal to max of x1 to xn is equal to the probability function f of x, aka the probability that big X is less than little x. Likewise, if it's minimum, we don't need to know it for this question, but if it's order statistics, we know that this is equal to 1, one minus the probability that x is less than x. And, and there's whole proofs on it in the other videos, but again, we only need a max for this question, so we're going to only focus on that max. And then this is also to the n power, where n is the number of claims, or n is the number of times you're um, multiplying number of stuff that you have so g of y then is equal to the probability that x is less than x so in our case probably that y to be this value we're going to actually denote this as y f of y is less than here so then what is the probability that x is less than this number and then again x is bounded between 1 and y so this is going to be 1 3 over x4 and then remember this is to the nth power where n is the number of claims so this is going to be 3 so taking the antiderivative, this is technically the same thing as 1 to y, or 3 to the x negative 4 dx. So this is equal to, to the third power. So this is equal to x to the negative 3, negative 3 over 3, going from 1 to y. So this is equal to <laughs> negative y to the negative 3, minus minus, becomes positive, to the 1, to the cubed. So this is equal to 1 minus y to the negative cube to the cube. But then this is equal to the g of y, right? And we're looking for the little g of y, which is just the derivative of g of y. So taking a derivative, you get 3 to the 1 minus y to the negative cubed to the second power times the chain rule on the inside. So you, you it becomes 3y to the negative 4. So simplifying this a little bit further, you get 9y to the negative 4th times 1 minus y negative cubed second. Okay, so now we're ready to rock and roll with our expectation of y. We know, oh, this is big of y, by the way. This is equal to y times the g of y, where g of y is this thing that we just found, 9y to the negative 4, 1 minus y to the negative cubed squared. So then this is equal to 9y to the negative cubed times 1 minus y to the negative cubed squared. Alright, so then I think I'm going to multiply this thing out, so you get, the, this part still stays the same, you get 1 minus 2y to the negative cubed, minus minus becomes positive, y to the, when you multiply, like if it's like y to the negative cubed times y to the negative cubed, that's adding these exponents, so you get y to the negative 6, so multiplying that y cubed out, or y to the negative cubed out, again this is still integrating from 1 to infinity, because we have to make sure we cover the whole area of x. And I'm going to throw that constant out, so you get y to the negative cubed minus 2y to the negative 6 plus y to the negative 9 dy. Cool. Taking the antiderivative, you get y to the negative, adding 1, so that's going to be negative <laughs> half, 1 half, 2 negatives make up positive, 2 over, this is to the adding 1, so that's 5, 5. I mean, there's, there's a negative in front, adding 1, so that's 8, 1 over 8, integrating from 1 to infinity, 
when I plug in infinity, all these, because it's 1 to the y to the negative 2, so if it's like, or y to the second, right? So y, 1 over a really big number is all just equal to 0. So this has just gone 0 minus minus, so that's positive. 1 half minus 2 fifth plus 1 eighth, which is equal to, get there is a 9 out there. So this is equal to 2.025, right? Oh, and then this is measured in, or x is measured in thousand. So we have to make sure we have to make sure we multiply the 2.025 times a thousand. So this is equal to 2025. Our answer A. If you guys have any question, feel free to leave it down below. Otherwise, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye.